Okay, now, did anybody notice I put the negative first and the positive term second when I rewrote this? Does it matter? No, no and we saw that, and I'm not going to show you that here. What if we had seen the positive 2x and the minus 15x? Again, if you saw it the other way, you saw a positive 2 and a minus 15 give you that sum of uh, negative 13 here. No, because now, what common factor can we remove from the first pair? X leaves a 5x plus 2. From the second pair, a negative 3, leaving a 5x. Remember, you factor out the negative, so it changes the sign to plus 2. We have our common factor. And then the remaining terms, x minus 3. So it's the same thing. It's just going to re reorder your factor. So it doesn't matter which order they're written in. Okay, now, does anybody know why I put the 2 second on this? Right, because I warned you, if this sign in between the pairs is a negative, it just complicates things. So if you have a choice, easier to choose to put the positive between them, or in this case, up here. Put the positive between, because then it's, you're less likely to make a, a factoring mistake with a negative. Now, the other thing, though, too, is after you do the first one, whether it's positive or negative, you kind of know what you're looking for, right? You want that x minus 3 to be the remaining factor. And so look to see, is there a way for you to get it into that form? All right. I want you to try this one on your own really quickly, please. All right. You guys come up with answers? If I was doing this, here's the process I would follow. And again, it's up to you to choose what works best for you. What common factor can you remove from all three terms? How many of you did that? Okay, re remember, I, I, I talked about this. Anytime I give you like a new thing to do, lots of times you guys want to just do that all the time. Yeah. Okay, now... Going back, what's the first step anytime you factor? Okay, so what if you remove a common factor of 3? Okay, what's left for your first term? Minus. Minus. All right, now this becomes a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, which is a little bit easier, right? What two factors of negative 5 have a sum of negative 4? Negative 5 and a positive 1. So efficiency-wise, here's your most efficient way to approach it. And now, if you didn't do it this way because you were practicing a new skill, which is okay, and obviously, I mean, in 15 years of doing this, this happens every single year, so it's not like um, I didn't know it was coming. Okay? But if you were to re try to rewrite the middle term on this, let's see what would happen. All right, so if you take the product of the leading coefficient and the constant, what do you get? Okay, are there two factors of negative 45 whose sum is negative 12? Well, it's the, it's the numbers themselves, right? Okay, anytime, if you're given a, like a large number or a number that is, doesn't have factors that you're kind of used to, look to see are those directly going to be how you rewrite the middle term. So if we rewrite this as, uh, let's put a negative 15 in front and then the positive 3 in the back just to keep consistent with the signs being positive here. Drop down your first and last term and then factor by grouping. What common factor can we remove from this first pair? 3x and that leaves an x minus 5. And from the second pair, a 3 leaving x minus 5. And so if you do it this way, you're going to get a common factor of x minus 5, and then the remaining term of 3x and a plus 3. Well, is this completely factored? Again, always recycle back. Every factor that you have needs to be completely factored. If you can remove a common factor from it, you do so. And if you did remove a 3 out of each of these terms, You'd have a 3, and then an x plus 1, and then this x minus 5. You wind up with the same thing either way. All right. Is everybody good with that, with that pattern 
represents or how you can find it. So that will work. That pattern works with like all the following. And it, I mean, it's it works for anything that can be factored this way. And now next year, you guys are going to do some things where you have to sketch the graphs of these, and you'll find what are called rational zeros or irrational zeros. So rational zeros obviously are where your factors give you fractions as solutions. But it is possible that you'll have irrational numbers as solutions, um, in which case you'll use quadratic formula. We'll talk about that in chapter five. But um, as far as what this is concerned with, by doing this quick little test right here, take the product of the leading coefficient, the constant, look to see can you find factors of that number whose sum is this middle term. If you can, then you know you're, these are going to be rational zeros. If you can't, then you know you have to use something like quadratic formula to solve. It's, it's, you're not going to be given fractions as answers. It'll be irrational numbers. Okay, so I'll come back to that a little bit and talk through it. But let me go through one final example. Okay, and it maybe addresses that question to Jack, which is, will this work all the time? Yes. Now, here's the case where when you look at this, trial and error is probably going to be more efficient. Okay, either one will work. And you can always rewrite the middle term. And for a lot of people, they even do it with the uh, leading coefficient of 1. It's still going to work. I mean, you're just doing kind of it's redundant. You're doing the same thing you're doing mentally. But here, when you're looking at this, as far as trial and error goes, the only two possible terms that can give you a factor or a product of 2x squared are 2x and x. So you know your first term has to be 2x and x. Your second term has to be either 2 and a negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, <coughs> negative or negative 1, positive 2, or positive 1, negative 2. You only have to test four cases here. Trial and error probably is easier here because you don't even need to write these down necessarily when you're testing them. You can test it mentally. But if you take and look at your outer plus inners, okay, so is negative 4x plus 2x equal to 3x? No. What about positive 2y minus I'm sorry, positive 2x minus 2x. Does that equal positive 3x? No. What about positive 4x minus 1x? Does that equal 3x? Yeah. And so here are your factors, 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. It's probably just as quick to do trial and error for something like this. But especially if, if this number is a 1 or if it's a prime number, any prime number here, you're probably going to be able to do a uh, trial and error pretty quickly, or if both the leading coefficient and the constant are prime numbers. Okay. Now, once again, if we had done this or confirmed it using the rewrite the middle term steps, 2 times a negative 2 is negative 4. What factors of negative 4 have a sum of positive 3? 4 and negative 1. So if we rewrote our middle term in this form and then solved only an x can be removed from the first pair, leaving a 2x minus 1. From the second pair, a 2, leaving a 2x minus 1. You have your common factor. And then the remaining term, x plus 2. Okay. Now, the one thing to be careful of here 